still slightly traumatized from this area very vaguely compared to how it used to be so I'm getting way better but um I'm driving with my mom and she just pretty much passed out in the passenger seat while I'm driving Mm -hmm. I'm like shaking her shoulder trying to get her conscious and she's not coming through quick enough so I call 911 Back. Welcome back. We're here for another episode of Mindset Talks Podcast. How you doing, my girl, Cassie? I am doing all right. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's just been, uh, you know, I feel like in life there's just always something stressful going on and you kind of just got to roll with the motions and, you know, make choices and decisions based on not being in the emotion if that makes any sense and uh, I think it makes sense (laughs) and yeah I don't know it's just been one of those just been one of those weeks can't complain too much but it's just been it's been a week okay well I'm glad you're doing okay and you know as you said it's not good to act on those stressful emotions so that's a big fact but what can you say you're grateful for amidst this stressful week? Because you know I'm going to hit you with one of those. You and this damn grateful for question. <laughs> I didn't know <laughs> last time, and I don't know this time. Um, I am grateful for not struggling. Okay. Yeah. No, that's fine. That's fine. That's a good one because <laughs> I'm sure a lot can't relate right now to that. So, yeah, I guess. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe that. I don't, I don't have the stresses of feeling like I'm struggling. Good. So. Good. I like that. I would say for myself, um, I'm grateful for my patience. As you know, my child is approaching three months and. <laughs> I'm grateful I have patience. Did I already use that one? Because if I did, I really mean it that I'm grateful for it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think you did. But uh, okay. nonetheless, it's still a good one, regardless how many times you say you're grateful for it. Yeah. Have to. Have to. Have to. So, yeah. well, I'm glad you can still think of something. I missed your week. I do hope that your week um, finishes out on a better note. If not, there's always next month or something. So, <laughs> damn, she just skipped the whole entire month. It's you time. know, we'll do a fresh oh, restart and start with yeah, November. Damn. You know what I mean? Like, mm. we're already halfway through October. My birthday is coming too, which is exciting. Oh. Um, not that I'm doing anything for it, but <laughs> it's coming. doesn't matter. It's still your birthday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's exciting. My birthday is coming and it'll be over. So I'm not really big on celebrating, as you know. The past few years, I have done stuff differently, you know, but yeah. um, this year I'm just grateful for my birthday. So, but aside from my birthday, Halloween is coming. Do you do anything for Halloween? Um, well, it's my boyfriend's birthday. So oh. I got myself a little Halloween baby. Um, <laughs> so we always <laughs> end up doing something. I don't really have nice. anything in, in the works just yet. Well, okay. I mean, I guess I not for the actual day, but we're going on vacation the day after. So Woo-hoo! Uh, looking forward to that. Are you able to share where you're going or is that like um, disclosed information right now? No, I mean, <laughs> I don't see why not. We're just going to Mexico. So it's oh, nice. Fun. Yeah. Oh, that'll be exciting. So. That's what I'm talking about. Get some <laughs> drinks. Hey. Yes, yeah, definitely exciting. Definitely much needed. And uh, just really couldn't come at a better time. Hey, well, I'm glad. And of course, I hope you have a safe trip. I'll, of course, wish you well before you leave. You know, we have some time, but that's great. Well, there you go. Something to look forward to. It is. It just, you know, these next few weeks just can't, just can't finish. <laughs> quick enough man let me tell you I'm just I'm in it and I just want to look past this and just being like okay <laughs> we got through that and we're okay your minutes closer don't worry yeah. <laughs> seems like a fucking eternity but we'll get there <laughs> well anywho so we'll move on to the, today's episode <laughs> we'll let Cassie get out of her sorrows over there 
<laughs> well, and I guess too, before we really like get into it, I think that yeah. we should just take a minute and apologize to everybody because for anyone that has been following. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we had some major technical difficulties. And the worst we've why... experienced yet. Oh, it was so bad. Like, and it was like back to back and like, it was just, oh. I mean, we, I, I don't, I don't even. When you have technical difficulties plus a baby. Yeah. It's a lot. It's just... <laughs> it's a lot. It was challenging. And so we thought that we don't want to give you guys poor quality. Um, so right. instead of publishing whatever the hell that mess is that we did record, uh, we just decided that we would postpone and try to do it again. So here we yeah. are. <laughs> Round two. <laughs> and can I just make a note too? I feel like this always happens whenever we're in the process of discussing the topic that we're going to discuss today. And I, I don't really know why that is, but it's kind of trippy. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. Um, I think it's because of the topic that it is. But then I'm like, does that mean that we shouldn't talk about it? Does that mean we shouldn't talk about it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Any way for you to get out of it, huh? Sure thing. <laughs> oh, well, no longer wait. We are going to be rediscussing if you haven't been with us from the very beginning. Um, we're bringing up our parents' stories. Uh, so I am lucky number one who gets to share her story first um, because Appreciate I just love you. Cassie so much and she doesn't want to go first. She doesn't want to go at all, honestly, if it was up to her. So here I am just throwing myself to the fire. Um, but also, too, uh, with it being October and Breast Cancer Awareness Month, um, and my mom having breast cancer during her time of living, um, it was only more appropriate that I go first, too. So we won't just fully throw Cassie under the bus there. But <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> So, yeah, so get ready to hear me talk. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, um, on a more serious note, uh, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2017. She had actually found a lump herself. She did, you know, those exams that we talked about, you know, not mm -hmm. in last week's episode because we didn't release last week, but the episode before that. Uh, check your grapes. Yeah, my mom was checking her grapes and she did find a lump. She had went to the doctors. Long story short, um, she was diagnosed with breast cancer in her left boob, unfortunately. Um, so for treatment, they did decide that a mastectomy was going to be best. So they fully removed the cancer and my mom would have to undergo chemo and radiation to follow up to fully ensure that, you know, the cancer was gone um, and that she was treated uh, in the best way possible for her diagnosis. I wonder, with you just saying that, I don't know why this just popped in my head, but I wonder yeah. how, like, how important and, like, how effective it is. Like, if they're able to cut out all of the cancer and have, like, clean margins. Mm-hmm. Why still go through, like, I understand the concept of still going through, like, chemo and radiation, but I wonder, mm -hmm. like, what are, like, what are the odds that, like, that really helps somebody from it coming back or, you know, like, I don't know, like, is it really needed to put yourself through that if you literally just, like, cut it out of your body? Fully removed it. Right. You know? Like, when yeah, my dad like... went through radiation and chemo, which we'll obviously get to, but mm -hmm. um, that was, like, his initial treatment. They didn't cut anything out, so... See, and that's the thing is like, was she overtreated? Pretty much is what you're saying. And that's a great question. I honestly never thought to ask that. And, you know, it's good that we're telling these stories again, because I don't remember you asking that before when we first told, you know, talked about these stories. And this is something that can help someone like, you know, for someone else who's going through the process now or, that we'll have to go through it in the future. That's something to ask, you know, if you're fully removing something, why is X, Y, Z being done afterwards if it's fully cleared, so to yeah. speak? I don't know. Great question. I really yeah. like that. I think I, I totally get it. And it's just kind of like the norm, you know, but like mm -hmm. 
necessary? Has it been proven to be necessary? I guess that I don't know. Very true. We'll have to do a little more research on that one. Yeah. So, so yeah, so that was, um, that was in June of 2017. So my mom did, I'm not sure how soon after, but it was shortly after, of course, having her mastectomy, she did start her chemo treatments. We were told that she was going to be more tired. She would have like a loss of appetite. Things were going to change uh, with her and her body, which was going to be big because, you know, my mom, a loss of appetite. She was someone who eat you at a house and home pretty much. She would go to my neighbor's house and be like, hey, what you guys having for breakfast? Or she would go to their house and cook herself something to eat. And my neighbor would be like, you know, cook whatever. As long as you make something for the kids too, we're fine. So, <laughs> you know, it's like, all right, let's see how this is going to go. Aside from my mom's mastectomy, she did have um, like gastro pains, like in the digestive area. She was having some pains as well. So she was trying to... At the same time? This is at the same time. My mom was trying to get that figured out as well um, with chemo treatment. And this was the pains were happening prior to prior to um, doing chemo. So it's not like she started chemo and then was having pains. She was having pains prior to doing chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. So she did have a lot of appointments between, you know, going to get chemo treatment. She was going to, I never know the proper name, but whatever type of gastro doctor, I'm sure we've said it before and I just don't know right now. she was going to that doctor as well to get it figured out as to what was happening within her intestine gallbladder area because she would have random pains. Mm. We didn't get an answer at the beginning. So my mom did have a procedure done where she would have a stent put in. They did an endoscopy and said pretty much that she had an opening that wasn't very open. So they had a stent put in to help, you know, keep that open. I want to say it was in her gallbladder. And forgive me for information that I'm not remembering because one, um, it was not a fully traumatic journey, but towards the end of the journey, things got a little more traumatic for me. So I try not to remember as much sometimes. I'd rather keep you know, my memories for the good times opposed to so many hospital visits and doctor visits. So my mom did have a stent put in and that helped to relieve her pain temporarily. It seemed like about every six months while she was doing her chemo and radiation treatment that uh, she was having this stent replaced, Mm -hmm. which was kind of weird. It was hard seeing her go through treatment because she was losing weight and my mom was already petite as a person you know super tiny you know she wasn't even 110 pounds normally she took weight gaining pills back in the day to try to gain weight you know Mm -hmm. and to see her lose weight was super super weird and uncomfortable at times yeah you know, because obviously you just don't look healthy as an adult to be, you know, like a hundred pounds. That's just, unless that's normal for you, you know, then that's totally different. But for her, it wasn't normal and it didn't look normal either. And it didn't look healthy. So once someone starts to not look healthy, it really makes you mentally think that they're sick, you know? And as much as we tell people going through these types of things that you're not sick. It's just so hard to train your brain to think different when you're someone on the outside watching them go through it. Yeah, definitely. So that was a lot. Um, So I'm going to fast forward some. Uh, So I would say around may maybe around spring of 2018 i don't have a specific month for the first time she did go to the hospital because she wasn't feeling well it was somewhat in regards to her stomach 
but it was hard to tell because when people are going through treatment, they can also not feel well from, you know, the, the medicine that they're taking in, uh, which is a huge thing. You'll notice that. I feel like that's common probably with most people. Was that something for your dad as well of not feeling well? For chemo? Yeah. About? So my dad was only able to go through one treatment of chemo. He, his body couldn't handle it. Um, so yeah. yes, <laughs> he was very sick after. It's aggressive. Yeah. It is aggressive. Um, even aside from appetite loss, my mom had hair loss as well. So, mm-hmm. you know, that was another unfortunate loss she had endured. Yeah, so it just fucking kills everything. Because like chemo, I guess we'll take this as like a, a little detour point. Like chemo yeah. treats and kills like pretty much like everything in everything. your entire body. Whereas it's like a- radiation pinpoints a specific area. So like mm-hmm. I'm going to assume that when your mom had radiation, they were just targeting like her breast area because that's where the cancer originated. Correct. But chemo wipes out everything in your body. So that shit just really like just fucks you yeah. completely. Yeah, it's it's a lot. So we had went to the hospital and due to my mom not feeling well, um, she kind of had like a seizure in the emergency room, which was super scary you know I'm obviously like yelling I need someone to get a nurse like I wasn't like ballistic yelling you know like causing a scene but like ran up to the desk we were just at like xyz and they could see so you know they hurried and took my mom in um we don't know what the exact cause was they said that oh she had an infection in her blood they replaced her stent and that solve that issue I say solved with air quotations for those of you who are not watching we fast forward to May of 2018 and um, actually that is when that had happened excuse me that situation did happen in May of 2018 Um, we fast forward to June of 2018 in the beginning of June and at this time we were getting ready for our friend to have her baby, the first baby of the group, Nat's yeah. baby. And so I was helping her with refinishing some furniture so that way she could pass it on to her baby. Mm. And my mom knew I was going and she decided she wanted to come with me that day. And I'm like, okay, you don't really care to go anywhere with me, but all right, like, I'm not gonna be mad about it, come on. Right. And especially with my mom going through everything she was going through I couldn't say no being able to spend more time with her um, was what we both needed and some type of normalcy so even though it wasn't normal for her to come with me to my friend's house but to just be in her presence was nice and normal so it wasn't like we were hanging out together at a doctor's office or something you know right so we did go to her house and my mom wasn't feeling too well while she was there so I was like, hey, let's wrap this up. I got to bring my mom back home because she's not feeling good. And that's what we did. Um, But on the way, we stopped at Nat's to get a banana because my mom said that she was feeling kind of weak and we needed just to get her something to eat. And Mm -hmm. the work we were doing was at her mom's house, at Nat's mom's house. So just to understand that we didn't leave her house and come back to her house. We were at a different house. <laughs> so um, we stopped the Nats, got a banana, we're driving home. And uh, this is like the hardest part of the story for me, aside from the very end of the story, of course. Yeah. Um, so, and I'm still slightly traumatized from this area, very vaguely compared to how it used to be. So I'm getting way better. But um, I'm driving home with my mom and she just pretty much passed out in the passenger seat while I'm driving Mm -hmm. I'm like shaking her shoulder trying to get her conscious and she's not coming through quick enough so I call 911 while I'm driving my mom does come back through while I'm on the phone with them and um I pretty much met up with an ambulance like in a direction of where I was going we met up at a location because I was not sitting and waiting for them to come and find us like Right. No one has time for that. My mom literally just passed out right next to me while I'm in the middle of driving. 
I need you to meet me somewhere. So they met up with me. That way I could keep driving and not just be sitting in one place. Yeah, especially um, when you're in a car. Like, yeah, I'm going to fucking drive <laughs> to where I need right. to Right. Like, if I can't meet with y'all, I'm just going to drive straight to the hospital then. Like, yeah. something's got to give. Um, so they did take my mom to the hospital, which it was just so crazy because it like it was like a blur. Everything happened so fast. And... I went home, took the dog out real quick because at that time we lived right around the corner from the hospital. And, you know, with someone going into the hospital, you don't know how long they're going to be there. And my mom didn't want me to tell anyone else that she was in the hospital. So it was kind of hard to be like, hey, so-and-so, can you go and take the dog out for me? Oh, because my mom, oh, I can't say it. So, Damn it, mom right I'm like oh you, you're making this very easy for me right now right you like know? you need support you know like I respect her you know her wishes right like, right but like you're gonna drive me insane yeah so I get to the hospital and she's very coherent you know she did have to throw up like numerous times like she kept throwing up and it was like bile like it was weird like like she was throwing up but the way she's talking and everything she sounded better than she did earlier that day it was so weird so you know they're like of course we're gonna keep her overnight see what's going on yada yada my mom's like yeah better go to, right mom's like go to work um because i had to go to work the next day mm-hmm. and with the hospital being right there um she didn't mind because usually she was at yale every other experience we had for the most part and that's a much further drive. Yeah, definitely. So the next um, the next day, I call her before I head to work, and she doesn't answer the phone. I'm just like, what the fuck? You're in the hospital. You tell me not to tell anybody. I'm the only person that's talking to you, and you don't answer the phone. Not cool. <laughs> She's just getting all fucking... Oh, just not cool. <laughs> Get me in my feelings, you know? So I make it to work. And I call her again, but this time I called the hospital phone and she finally answers. And I'm just like, I called you. She's like saying something, but she didn't really feel like talking to anybody or something like that. And I'm just like, like, okay, uh, I get it. But like, after the shit that just happened yesterday, you right. weren't talking to me. You right. This is me we're be- talking about. <laughs> right. You're going to be talking to me. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So this is where it all goes downhill. My mom pretty much tells me that she knows that she's dying because she said that she doesn't have much longer. And that, like, my heart races every time I say that. Like, my heart is all, like, beaten heavy right now. Um, It hurts a lot less to say it than, you know, and it hurts a lot less to think about her saying it than when I first heard her say it. So I feel like I've grown, even though it will never be easy to process, you know. Which is traumatizing in itself to hear your parent say that. Because, like, I, you know, I had a similar experience, too. And that shit just, like, it sticks with you, you know. It like, does. I appreciate you for being honest with me and me hearing yes. it from you. But, like, I also don't want to hear that. <laughs> right it's it's a catch-22 because it's like I would rather you tell me than not tell me but I'd rather you not tell me <laughs> right but then if she didn't tell you you wouldn't have then, been as prepared you know exactly and I 100% respect her doing that because that's how I operate like I like I'm premeditated I got to know like yeah. just let me know so I can know how to line things up and how to maneuver and you know what to do next Mm -hmm. so what I did next was cry I cried (laughs) I called my sister and for those of you who don't know my sister is my half sister so um she does not have the same mom and she's known my mom like forever though Mm -hmm. so call my sister I'm hysterical in the back of work at the time I'm outside of the building and she comes she picks me up and brings me to the hospital and later that night my mom is like in a more sedated state and um, the doctor comes in and pretty much tells me that my mom has pancreatic cancer. I'd be like, 
What? Come again? I was, I didn't feel shocked. I really didn't because, no, because one of our hospital trips um, when we were at Yale, it something wasn't sitting right. Like it didn't feel right. Um, someone said something about her having liver cancer and it was like, she had breast cancer. Where's this liver cancer thing coming from? And then the the person who came in and said that seemed kind of hush hush after my mom kind of like snapped on them about like the wrong diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Um, So then at that point, something just wasn't sitting right. And then they were doing different biopsies and couldn't get enough cells to determine something in this area and that area. Her pancreas being one of the areas um, I found really ironic. So when... I'm told that she is diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. I felt mad. I felt more mad than anything um, because then it pretty much connected all the dots as to why her stomach was messed up. Um, I truly believe it was because of pancreatic cancer. And from what I've heard, when you have breast cancer, it's best to scan the body Um, which I'm sure is why they did chemo to be able to help prevent cancer in other areas. But um, it was too late apparently for that. And I know pancreatic cancer is aggressive. Mm -hmm. So um, it really doesn't take long for that one to kind of take someone out, I guess is the best way to put it. So (laughs) no, it's not. There's no best way to put it. But um, the doctor told me that we have the option to put my mom on life support. And my mom and I had a conversation prior to when she was in her better days. And I highly advise others to do this when they are a caregiver for someone or just in general, um, if you're dealing with a similar type of situation and you're someone who's very involved um, have that conversation as to life support um, when someone's in a state of not being able to make a decision for themselves, you know, who will be that person to make those decisions and what is it that um, they would like to happen. So my mom and I did have that conversation, which I tell you from 2017 to 2018, I've never had so many hard conversations with my mom. Um, one of them being if she is in a situation where she can't make a decision for herself, for me to make the decision, and if she cannot come back to her regular self, Mm. to not do things like life support or to prolong her care. Mm. Yeah. So I went with her wishes and I told the doctor that we are not going to do, well, I did ask first because of the conversation I asked will she be able to um, come back to her regular self at all? And they said, no, this is just prolonging her. Mm -hmm. So um, I made the decision to not proceed forward with life support. Yeah. And, you know, at that point, I, my aunt was already reached out to, um, my mom's only sister. So, you know, at that point, we're getting the word around to the family as to what's going on. So over the next like 48 hours, there were so many people coming to visit. Um, Thankfully, this was a time before COVID. So we were able to have many people come to visit her. Mm -hmm. And um, that was on a Sunday. My mom, that following Tuesday, two days later, um, did pass away that Tuesday night. Uh, That Tuesday, I remember, was a very full day because I went to my job to hand in LOA paperwork, Mm -hmm. um, FMLA, excuse me, FMLA paperwork, because I guess what I had had expired. So I had to renew that. So I actually went there that day. We had set up hospice care with the help of my aunt that day, Mm -hmm. which we weren't sure how that was going to work because my mom was in such a critical state that if we were to transport her, that alone would have caused her end of life, possibly. Yeah. 
So it was a like quite a day. So later in the evening, my aunt suggested that um, I go home because I've been staying at the hospital as much as possible, of course, with my mom. Yeah, definitely. You know, my uncle would help out with taking out the dog and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So my aunt, you know, she was like, you know, I don't know if you um, should stay there. You should go home and get some rest, blah, blah, blah. And I said, mm, I don't know. I'll fill it out and see how it goes. And I think that was me listening to my intuition, you know, now looking back at everything. Mm-hmm because I was in the room with my two of my cousins and my sister and you know we're just talking and you know we're just sitting around my mom's bed we're just sitting in the room just talking and you know reminiscing and stuff and my mom did pass that night with all of us sitting sitting in the room there with her so um like I was holding her hand and sitting there with her so I had to be there yeah you know I really don't know how I would feel today if I wasn't there I don't think I'd be as sane or okay around the situation if I wasn't there I feel like I would... um you know I would just feel so unfulfilled if I wasn't there with her in her final moments so um yeah it was a lot it was really really hard like really hard yeah girl I bet like just so much shit and for it to just decline so quickly is just like uh, I don't know it's just insane it makes you speechless and the irony of it all is that my mom passed on a year to the date that she had um got her mastectomy done so my mom had a, she always had her calendar. She would write down her appointments. She, you know, would just write, you know, what like people do with calendars. I mean, back in the day with calendars, because obviously today we use our phones and we don't have paper calendars as much. Um, but she would write everything down on her calendar. And I remember when I got home that night after she passed, her calendar was on the coffee table in the living room and it was circled one year cancer free on the same day she passed i find that shit so fucking weird it's just so heartbreaking like oh poor mama like i just oh i just i don't even know i have like no words just because it's so it's just so it's a lot it's a lot and it's like this is why we say it's important to get yourself checked because Mm -hmm. you just don't know and my mom was a very small breasted woman like barely had breasts you know right so the fact that you know that was something that happened to her it goes against any myths that people may think that oh if you're a larger chested woman that no it really doesn't matter who you are men can get breast cancer so you know it's just important that we take care of ourselves and you know I'm not going to say my mom had the healthiest past because she didn't Mm -hmm. you know but from all of that happening to her it has definitely opened my eyes and allowed me to make more moves to be healthier in my life and my lifestyle Mm -hmm. so you know I did go and get genetic testing done I started it within the year that she passed but it was too much it was too soon like I literally just lost my mom to this I'm too scared to truly find out like what's going on with me so it did take me a good three years to actually like fulfill these things and get it done yeah um but even my diet I've changed my diet because you know I could be cuckoo and just think that certain foods are linked to whatever but I know there are you know, studies that show certain things are connected to this and that. And so I've changed my diet. You know, I, I've already was exercising, so that didn't really change much, you know, and that's my lifestyle, but you know, it's just, it really, it really affected me in so many different ways, but not just negatively, you know, like I, I found positives from it, even though it's such a shitty situation, Yeah. but I feel like it's important that we all try to find something positive, you know, and that something positive is usually just doing something different than the person that we lost. Yeah, I agree. 
you just have me thinking though is there anything that like i'm doing differently but i'll have to ponder on that one because i'm not yeah. sure. i mean i think it's good that we all reflect and check that out because it i personally find it to be important and mm-hmm. you know our parents and if you're a parent because now that i'm a parent i know i say it but you know you want better for your kids so why not pay attention to what your parents are doing and try to do something different because they can't always tell us don't do this don't do that sometimes we just have to look and listen from looking you know we just have to watch them and learn that way so for me obviously without having my mom here now that's my way of learning right yeah no that's true and I think that's that's huge. And I, I think it says a lot that you're, you know, able to kind of like reflect in that way and then try to take it and make something, you know, positive out of such a, a you know, a horrible situation. So yeah. Yeah. So that is how one of your co hosts had gotten here today. Um, <laughs> in Not the a next, club you want to be in. <laughs> yeah, no, in the next episode, you will get to hear Cassie's Maybe. Um, but you will, <laughs> you will, but, um, aside from my sad story, which I hope I didn't bring anyone to tears too bad. Um, I tried to make it less sad than the first time we told it. it just, yeah. Well, it's a lot. Yeah. Um, but I wanted Cassie, since you're not talking about anything this episode um as much as I am I would like for you to tell our viewers what we've been having with our podcast and for the month of October (laughs) I'm like why is she wording it so awkward (laughs) (laughs) if I don't do anything awkward then I won't be me (sighs) is that true though I feel like I'm the awkward one I have my moments. I think we share. That's the nice thing about each other. We're such good friends that we share the awkwardness. We do definitely bounce off of each other very nicely. (laughs) But without further ado, what Amanda is getting to is Mm -hmm. for all of those that have been paying attention and following us on all of our platforms to include Instagram and Facebook, we Mm -hmm. have released a brand new merch line. It is our Faith Over Fear line where we thought it was super important to remind those who are either going through a breast cancer situation um, or, and I'm specifying that because it's October, it's Breast Cancer Awareness, and we purposely put the pink ribbon on Mm -hmm. the merch to signify that. Um, So if you've been going through it or you know somebody that's been going through it, we want to remind you guys that in these times, you really have to have faith. Um, because fears can truly get the best of you. And Definitely. I'm a firm believer in mindset. Hello, Mindset Talks podcast. Hello. <laughs> and just having that that faith in your mind and not letting the fear overtake you and just always remaining to stay focused. Yeah. I really do think that it, it takes you farther than it would if you didn't have that mindset. So just a little reminder, um, and for the entire month of October, for any merch that we sell um, for the Faith Over Fear line, we will be giving all of our proceeds to um, a Breast Cancer Awareness Foundation, um, which probably the one that you had mentioned Breast Cancer previously. Foundation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so make sure you guys go ahead and check it out. You can get there through our links in the bio, both on Facebook and on Instagram. Um, yes. to purchase and if there's something up there that you don't see but you would like whether it's a phone case or um, you know sandals or whatever the case might be let us know and we can make it happen um, so make sure you guys go ahead and just check it out so we can all support breast cancer awareness for those in need yes thank you Cassie and faith over fear is definitely good for those who are the support team for those yeah. who are diagnosed as well so don't think that if you're not, you know, if you're not someone who has been diagnosed, um, you as a supporter having faith is just as helpful. You know, I think about that with my mom. And if I was just like a Debbie Downer the whole time while she was going through what she was going through, um, I don't think she would have made it that full year. You know, she could have just let that fear taken over and let her body just weaken and not make it as far as she did. So yeah no I definitely, definitely agree. important 
Yeah. Yes. Well, once again, if Cassie doesn't have anything, I'm going to be wrapping this episode up. Nope, I got nothing else. Nothing else because she's saving it all for next week. So uh, once again, we do thank y'all for tuning in to another episode with us. And until next time. Bye, guys. <laughs>